Hello, this time we're going to discuss about solving quadratic equations by factoring. Okay, so we're going to first discuss the zero product property. For any real numbers a and b, if a times b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero or both a and b is equal to zero. Okay. So we have here an example. We have x plus 3 multiplied by the quantity 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. This one is already written in factor form and it is equal to 0. To solve, you simply set the individual factors equal to 0. So what does it mean? We have here x plus 3 multiplied by the quantity 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. You're going to set the individual factors equal to 0. So we're going to separate the two factors. We're going to draw a line to separate them. We have here x plus 3 equals 0. And the next one we have 2x minus 1 equals 0. So this is what we call the zero proper, uh, zero product property. Okay, so we need to solve for x here. We need to get the opposite of 3, and that is negative 3. You're going to write negative 3 on both sides of the equation. So you have here x, positive 3 plus negative 3, that will be 0, is equal to negative 3. Do the same thing here. We're going to solve for x. So we need to get the opposite of negative 1, that is positive 1. Positive 1 on both sides of the equation. So you now have here 2x. Negative 1 plus 1, that will be 0, is equal to 0 plus 1, that is 1. Dividing both sides by 2, since x has a coefficient of 2. So 2 divided by 2, that is 1. So x now is equal to 1 half. So the solution of the given quadratic equation is x equals negative 3 and x equals 1 half. Okay? Let us have another example. We have here, we're going to use the zero product property. Okay? So we have... 4x, I'm sorry, 4t. 4t plus 1 multiplied by 1, um, t, I'm sorry, t minus 2 equals 0. Using the zero product property, we're going to separate the two factors. We have here 4t plus 1 equals 0 and t minus 2 equals 0. We need to get the opposite of positive 1, that is negative 1 on both sides. So you now have 4t. Positive 1 plus negative 1, that will be 0, is equal to 0 plus negative 1, that is negative 1. Dividing both sides by 4. So 4 divided by 4, that is 1. So, t now is equal to negative 1, 4. The next one, get the opposite of negative 2, that is positive 2. Positive 2. So, you have there t, negative 2 plus 2, that will be 0, is equal to 0 plus 2, that is 2. So, the value of t is negative 1, 4 and positive 2. Okay, next we have here, what are the solutions of its equation? So do the same thing, letter A, you're just going to separate the two factors and equate it to zero. Okay, so you have x plus 1 equals zero, then x minus 5 equals 0. You may write 
a line between them or you may just write them separately. Okay? So we have here negative 1, negative 1. So x now, that will be 0 equals 0 minus 1, that is negative 1. The opposite of negative 5, that is positive 5. Positive 5. So x now, negative 5 plus 5, that will be 0, is equal to 0 plus 5, that is 5. So the value of x is positive 5 and negative 5. How about on B? Okay, so do the same thing to x plus 3 multiplied by the quantity x minus 4 is equal to 0. Separate the two factors. We have 2x plus 3 equals 0. Then 2x minus 4 equals 0. You may write the vertical line or not. It's up to you. Okay, so the opposite of 3 that is negative 3. Then you have 2x, positive 3 plus negative 3, that will be 0. 0 plus negative 3, that is negative 3. Since we have here the coefficient of x is 2, we need to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So 2 divided by 2, that is 1. So x now is equal to negative 3 over 2. Okay? And then the next one, get the opposite, positive 4, positive 4. So x, negative 4 plus 4, that will be 0. And then 0 plus 4, that is 4. So the value of x here is 4, while here is negative 3 over 2. This is what we call the zero product property. Okay, do you have any question? Okay, so let us continue, letter C. 2x, I'm sorry, 2y plus 1 multiplied by y plus 14 equals 0. So separate the two factors, 2y plus 1 equals 0. Then y plus 14 equals 0. Get the opposite, negative 1, negative 1. Then, so you now have 2y, 1 plus negative 1, that will be 0, is equal to 0 plus negative 1, that is negative 1. Dividing both sides of the equation by the coefficient of y, so 2 divided by 2, that is 1, y now is equal to negative 1 half. Do the same thing here, get the opposite of 14, that is negative 14 on both sides. So you now have y, this will be 0, is equal to negative 14. So y is equal to negative 14, and y is equal to negative 1 half. Letter D, 7n minus 2, multiplied by the quantity 5n minus 4, is equal to 0. Separate the two factors. We have 7n minus 2. Equate it to 0. 5n minus 4. Equate it to 0. Get the opposite of negative 2. That is positive 2 on both sides. So you now have 7n. Negative 2 plus 2. That will be 0. Is equal to 0 plus 2. That is 2. Dividing both sides by 7, so n now is equal to 2 over 7. The opposite of negative 4, this will be positive 4 on both sides. So you now have 5n, this will be 0, is equal to 0 plus 4, that is 4. Dividing both sides by 5. So, n now is equal to 4 over 5. So, the value of n is 4 over 5 and 2 over 7. Okay, any question about that? Okay, how about here? What are the values of x for which 2x minus 4 multiplied by the quantity 6x minus 3 equals 0? Of course, since it is 
already a factor, we are going to apply the zero product property. So you have 2x minus 4 multiplied by 6x minus 3 is equal to 0. Separate the two factors. We have 2x minus 4 equals 0. And then 6x minus 3 equals 0. The, uh, we are going to solve the first factor first. Get the opposite of negative 4, that is positive 4, positive 4. So you now have 2x. Negative 4 plus 4, that will be 0, is equal to 0 plus 4, that is 4. Dividing both sides by 2. So x now is equal to 4 divided by 2, that is 2. Okay, get the opposite of negative 3, that is positive 3, positive 3. So 6x, negative 3 plus 3, that will be 0, is equal to 3. Dividing both sides by 6, so 6 divided by 6, that is 1, so x now is equal to 3 over 6. There are those who are confused with dividing these numbers. They will answer it as 2, but that is wrong. Okay, so let us rewrite the value of x here. x equals 3 over 2, um, 3 over 6, I'm sorry. Let us, since this is a fraction, let us try to simplify the fraction by dividing the numerator and the denominator by their common factor. So the common factor of 3 and 6 is 3. So divide the numerator and the denominator by 3. So 3 divided by 3, that is 1, and then 6 divided by 3, that is 2. So the value of x is equal to 1 half and you have here 2. So do we have there 1 half and 2? So the answer there is 3. Okay? So, again, you are just going to use this one if ever you're going to encounter this kind of expressions or equation i should say if the given quadratic equation is already written in factored form okay let us go back to this one which equation has roots of negative seven and four roots you might be confused what does it mean when we say roots it is the solution okay so it says here by the given problem, x equals negative 7 and x equals positive 4. Okay, let us try option A. x plus 7 equals 0 and x minus 7, I'm sorry, minus 4, I should say, equals 0. Let us try to erase that one. Okay, no, never mind. Okay, so equate this to 0, then solve for x. Get the opposite of 7, negative 7. So x now, this will now be 0, is equal to 0 plus negative 7, that is negative 7. How about here? Get the opposite of negative 4, that is positive 4 on both sides. So you have x, negative 4 plus 4, that will be 0. So 0 plus 4, that is 4. Is x equal to 4? Is x equals to negative 7? Therefore, the answer there is letter A. Okay? So this is just a simple way to find for the value of x once it is written in this form, in factored form. You're just going to apply the zero product property. Okay? Any question?